slow burn. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. It's more than a mobile lounge. It's an environment and an experience rich in history, luxury, and personality. An elegant extension of any celebration occasion. It's the perfect escape and meeting place. A space where you can relax or enjoy a shared passion. Have Slow Burn plan your next big event or before you are planning to celebrate your win over your athletic rival, you can shop our collections at www.slowburnwaco.com. But if they want to tap, uh, I'm going to do the dab, yeah. If you think all pads are exact. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, man. I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a lot. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball? This is Dr. Cavill with Inside the HPC Sports Lab. With Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, Mike Watkins from Washington is out on assignment. So we have none other than the HBCU guru, Joshua Sim Senior. We will get our other HBCU guru on here as well in terms of B.J. Jones. And then we know we have truly all the and that Charles Bishop. With that being said, I want to say welcome to episode 332 inside the HBCU sports. That's the show that's covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBCU sports. Institutions large and small, from the NEIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBC sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBC sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Kalil, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. As I said, Mike Washington is out on assignment, so we have none other than co-hosts, Joshua Sim Senior. We're filming from our home studio and sending a signal live to Case Waste 1230 AM Studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, as multi Hall of Famer Ralph Cooper, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. With that being said, Charles, I see you in Jackson. You sound like you look like you're in one of them legendary spots. Is that one of those juke joints or is that a music place? <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to you live from Jack's over here at Churchill Smoke Shop, Dr. Deville. You know, it's, it's one of the well, hot that, spots. Well, that is terms. legendary, not the time. Yeah, yeah. I know, but it's legendary. My fault. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Coming from over here, uh, uh, as uh, everybody gets perked up for Jackson State all corn this weekend. Uh, hopefully I'm muted enough to where you can't hear the, the buzz around the corner from me here in the other room. But, yeah, a lot of fans are looking forward to Jack State all corner. So. Yeah, I heard they're talking your head off, man. They they, they get Charles, they get excited. They think Charles is ready to talk football 50 some second Jack State. Like, look, man, I got a show to do. Hey, I I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's I exactly what it is. <laughs> Joshua Sims, you next. They're going to be coming at you like that. Man, Every time look. you look around, like, what you, what you, what you, what you. I'm ready for it, dog. You know what I mean? I, I'm ready for it, especially now. You know what I mean? We getting closer and closer to that celebration bowl, but I'm gonna be pass out my card. What's up, ladies? <laughs> Y'all still here? I'm married. I'm married, but feel free. I feel free. Let me know if you need anything. You need me to interview your son? I got you. <laughs> you got some questions? You got a question? I got, you. I got, got you. some questions. Right. Got a question? I got answers. There it is. I got there it is. Man, that's good feeling. It's good feeling. Good. To see you all, gentlemen. With that being said, let me start with you, Charles, as we get into that. Before I say that, today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency LLC. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. With that being said, uh, it's coming down the stretch. It's, it's, it's here. It's, 
the end of the season just about. We've had champions established. We have people in playoffs. We got folks preparing for the playoffs. We got people preparing for divisional championships. Um, so let's get into it. Charles, what are some of the news of the day? What's on your mind? Yeah, let's get into it. Let's start off with this Black College uh, Football Hall of Fame class of 2023 finalists uh, named uh, this past week. Uh, let me go through a few of those finalists. Uh, some, I mean, legends of yesteryear. Joe, 747 Adams from Tennessee State. Antoine Bethea, defensive back from Howard. Verlon Biggs, defensive end from Jack State. Dwayne Ward uh, from North Carolina A&T. Wayman Bryant, Vince Buck. Kevin Dent from Jackson State. Leslie Frazier from Alcorn. Mike Holmes from Texas Southern. Richard Huntley from Winston-Salem State. Henry Lawrence from Florida a and Albert Lawrence from Grambling. Jim Marcellus from Tennessee State. Rashawn Mathis from Bethune-Cookman. Tyrone McGriff, offensive lineman from Florida A&M. Lamar Parrish, running back from Lincoln University. Elijah Pitts from Philanda Smith College. Remember him, Green Bay Packers. Tyrone Poole from Fort Valley State. Dominique Rogers, Cromartie, defensive back from Tennessee State. Jay Scott Walker, quarterback from Howard University. Johnny Walton, quarterback from Elizabeth City State University. And the coaching finalists, listen to these names. Rudy Hubbard, head coach mm. of Florida A&M. Fred Pop Long, head coach of Wiley mm. College, 1921-1965. Doug Porter, who's the head coach of Mississippi Valley, Howard, and Fort Valley State. And the venerable Pete Richardson from Winston-Salem State University and the Southern University. So those are the finals for the Black College Football Hall of Fame, Doc. Man, it's going to be a heck of a job pairing those down. You said some names. It's just something mm. back in the day when they had to be so descriptive uh, because they were writing for the newspapers and they had to create your imagination. It's really for radio. Them certainly before television and way before streaming as we are able to do now. And so you get those names, 747, Fred Pop Long, uh, you know, you like whatever. Skywalker. So this is Ben, mm-hmm. Ben, exactly. Skywalker, which is a throwback because he played in more of this current era, but he had one of those names. As I always talk about, and you know, Charles, and as well as you, Joshua, this is the Big Ben L. Cavill Senior HBCU Football Award uh, provided to the best player in the state of Texas that either uh, born in the state of Texas or went to a high school in the state of Texas, right, and plays at HBCU. Well, he played under Fred Pop long uh, at mm-hmm. Wiley College when they dominated those first couple of decades with Multiple national championships, obviously, with uh, several SWAC championships. So to hear his name resonated with me among the others. So big time, big time when you talk about Black College Hall of Fame. Uh, it's good to see that those individuals are being celebrated for what uh, they have and how they captured our imagination over the years, both for some of us that got to see it live, for some of us seeing it live, and then we go back and read the research and we recapture uh, that imagination, and when you talk about the governance structure, it's fascinating to see all that take place. A little bit about that going down memory lane. Let me see, Joshua Sims, what HBCU news of the day that you want to share today? Yeah, man, in, in the in the spirit of uh, of talking about the Black College Hall of Fame, um, you know, and and obviously our respected person that we've had, I, I think our latest person we've had in there was uh, Air Harvey, was Earl Air Harvey. Uh, this past weekend, Davius Richard kind of chipped into and got a little bit closer to Earl Air Harvey, man, and the 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 uh, mystique that is Earl Air Harvey. Um, this past weekend, Davis Richard became the second all-time leading passer uh, as far as in yards, total yards passing, as well as the second all-time leading uh, passing touchdown leader in North Carolina Central football history this past weekend. Um, he eclipsed, uh, you know, in this season, he eclipsed two of my teammates um, that I played with mm. in Central as well as a litany of other guys that have a tremendous amount of love and respect inside of the halls that is at 1801 Fayetteville Street. So a super salute to that young fellow, man. I I don't believe he's going to be playing this weekend. Uh, But the reality is, man, super salute to that young brother, man. And uh, we hope that he get a chance next year uh, by him coming back next year. He's just a junior. uh, So he'll be back next year. And hopefully he gets a chance to kind of chip away and see, you know, who knows, man. He may mess around and touch uh, Air Harvey's records, man. And so that would be a great, great historic thing. That's pretty amazing uh, when you talk about how much he's progressed and still has a year um, left to try to really uh, put a major stamp of what he's accomplished as far 
uh, where'd you say the halls? What halls? What what is the halls? What address are you referring to there? Oh, as far as the eighteen oh one Fable Street, <laughs> Durham, North, Car- Durham, North, North Carolina. You, you saw y'all kill me, ha- making me remember all these addresses now because now everybody wants to come and do the addresses. But I, yeah. You know, I've heard it for the long fourteen hundred Lynch Street. Uh, now you, you got Joshua Sims doing it from the me act perspective. <laughs> and, and, and Doc, you know what? I'm not even really doing it like the right way. The Alex Rivera Sports Hall of Fame is actually not on Fayetteville Street. It's at 500 Lawson Street. My bad. It's <laughs> my bad. The school is located at 1801. The Hall of Fame oh. for the sports is at 500 Lawson Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. I got to get that right. Somebody let's knows be, history. Let, you know what, Doc? Let, let me see. Can I reach into Josh Sims' uh, pockets real quick with this uh, bit of HBCU news? Journal admission tickets for the 2022 Cricket SWAC Championship game are now on sale. Josh, I need you to come on down here to Jackson as we figure out the SWAC West this weekend and see who <laughs> uh, Jackson State will be taking on in the SWAC Championship. You have my personal invite. Oh! Down to Jackson, Mississippi. And, and take in some of this swag flavor, this du jour that is the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Dog, all I needed, all I needed was the invite, dog. I'm in the building. That's all I needed. My dog. I, I will say this: one thing that I know about Charles, you talking about a gracious host. Oh, I mean, man. you are taken care of from top to bottom. You are gonna have a good time, and then the fans down in Jackson, while they can talk some great noise, in terms of them taking care of you and welcome you. After they let you know who they cheering for, they're gonna make sure that you fed well. You know what I'm saying? If you like to drink, they're gonna make sure you get to drink well. So yeah, they're gonna take care of you. I want to tip it in a little different direction. Um, football is in the air, and it's always in the air. Rightfully so, it's getting the major with the bandwidth. But we got a little basketball going on. We talked about this a little bit on Tuesday about the major wins of the SWAC. You've seen MEAC play some really good games, thinking about that at North Carolina Central. Jackson State played in a a close one a couple of days ago, but we got some win, particularly in this Pac-12 SWAC uh, challenge, if you for lack of better words, right, this partnership they have. They went three and three with Gramlin Mm. getting it done on Friday. Then you turn around uh, Sunday, you had Texas Southern get it done, and then it closed out with Prairie View at home getting a win. So that was a big deal in terms of being three and three uh, in that. Turned around and you had Arizona kind of push back a little bit, for lack of better words, You're talking about these Pac-12, they playing these games, they should be winning. Then you turn around and you have accolades by the University of Houston, Kevin Sampson, uh, just give some accolades about how much he's support and proud of the HBCUs, the work they put in, uh, accolades uh, about recognizing the Pac-12 for getting in those, especially those coaches that played on it. Uh, kudos to the coaches and SWAC for winning those games. You know, obviously he had the game against Jones, and he talked about some history when they were on the recruiting trails. Then you got Byron Smith, obviously a UH alum. And so they have some connection. He's come back. He's individualized and talked about his big win. So I thought that was big when you talk about that. And then Shivery's not done because I should have probably started with this. But you talk about the women with Jackson State getting that big power five first win in the program's history at least of the recent time in terms of getting a win over Pac-12. Then they turned around and doubled down, which I really like. They got a win against um, Louisiana Lafayette in terms of closing out the WNIT uh, with the win uh, in terms of in the finale as they played them. And they really just uh, beat them up as well. The uh, game never was close. So you're talking about two straight solid wins, and you kind of book in that. I thought that was beautiful basketball. I want to talk about and give some love to Division Two because you got a bunch of challenges and classics. I really like that. Obviously, we talked a little bit about the Chris Paul with Virginia Union getting it done over Xavier in the championship game there. Um, now you got an HBCU challenge, uh, which is part of this All-Star weekend, but they do an HBCU All-Star challenge. They got the ATL has something to say uh, that's going to feature SIAC and CIAA men's basketball programs, uh, team showcasing in terms of Livingston, Fayetteville State, Virginia Union, and Shaw. Participating that will square off against Albany State, Lemoyne, Owens, Tuskegee, and Morehouse. Um, you even got a game out of Austin, uh, which is new, uh, which is done by the Austin uh, Area Urban League, AAUL, uh, where you got 
NIA program. You got four of them playing in this game. You got Houston Tillerson out of the Red River Athletic Conference. Uh, you got Wiley College out of the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference. That's the HBCU Conference, if you would. Uh, you got Talladega out of the Southern uh, Athletic Conference over there in Langston out of the Sooner Athletic Conference. So four different conferences in a matchup there. So I thought that was pretty sweet. And then they even got one in New York um, where you're talking about the Harlem Classic, uh, which is um, getting in the mix in terms of some HBCUs featured in that matchup. So a lot of uh, classes going around. Um, in terms of Division II NIA, so it's good that they're getting to play in these classes and getting some stuff done. So I wanted to share a little bit about that in terms of the focus of what's going on there. Let's get in here and take our next break uh, as we get into that. In terms of the Harlem Classic, uh, it's interesting because it's featuring HBCUs, but they're playing as what I recall uh, call or focus on HWCUs, historically white colleges and universities, as you all know that I like to call them that in terms of making sure we understand the uh, semblance and, uh, and the stratification between the two in terms of a historical perspective. And so that's going to be fascinating when you got those schools such as Winston-Salem State, Bowie and Lincoln as they play uh, Thomas Jefferson of Philadelphia, Felician University of Rutherford, New Jersey, and Central Atlantic Athletic Conference members there in Thomas Aquinas College out of Spark Hill, New York. So Good to see them participating. Basketball's in the air. But we'll get back on the other side. We'll get in back into football. Specifically, going to get into the bands. We're going to give you those top 10 marching sports, some changes out of here. We're going to get in that. And then the second half, where we're really getting in these guys, uh, belly wick, if you would. We're going to throw the fastball and bring up a little baseball. No, not really. We're going to get into some of these football matches. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this first break. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak free and odor free comfort with the totally reinvented always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. <laughs> quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Them belly full, but we hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a good thing going. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Authentic Caribbean cuisine. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, boy, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Just do the first sports guru. And I'm almost done with the logo. We back. Nice. We back. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington. Charles Bishop, Mike Washington is out on the side. Sound like Dr. Bill out on the side, man. I was getting into the conversation. They talking, they playing it. Y'all going to let all the secrets out. Being, let's get into the Martian Sport, the band, as we get into the top 10 changes here. But before I get into it, you know, I picked on some of these uh, programs and not participating in games against other HBCUs in the top 10. You can't do that. Now, I'm really going to go in. Now, North Carolina a and 
Now, mm -hmm. I told you my thoughts about them moving to the Big South. Certainly have trouble just beside the name going to the Colonial. That all just has me combobulated for different reasons. But they're playing mm -hmm. for a championship. So I'm all in on North Carolina a and I want to see a and the Aggies win a championship in the Big South before they leave. What a way to close out. It's on the road, going to well. Both teams are 4 0. We talked a little bit on Tuesday. But according to BlueDeathValley.com on Twitter, he put this out there. He said, quote, it was just today I learned that asking a marching band to attend a championship football game is considered the highest form of disrespect. I don't know that's all HBCU, but what? it's certainly a big mindset. And so somebody come in here and say, I'm definitely salty if not coming talking to my son to his first game. That's Debo Sampson uh, chiming in. G. Dunlap said, are they coming or not? Zay chimes in and said, no. Uh, so from every indication, uh, the Aggies are on their own with the fans, I guess. You know, they go support down there. But uh, I don't get it. But, yeah, hey, marching sport, let's get into the top ten. We'll talk about that a little later. Let's drop it uh, with those teams that are coming in in terms of top ten. Dropping out this week off one stake, the sound of dynamite band, three and three, three and two, dropping out of the top 10 with some teams with a band jumping in. They got a chance to make a statement against one of the top five bands in the land. We'll see if they at the top at the end of the poll, but they got a chance to find a way back in the top 10, major upset. Uh, but right now they're outside looking in. They do have our receiving votes. As we get into those that are receiving votes, you see, they have 11 there at the top. You got North Carolina a t Blue and Gold Marching Machine, two and two. Maybe that's why they're not showing up. They mad because they're not representing the top 10. I apologize. <laughs> I do this. I would have stuck you in the top 10. You for them. I would not make that error again. I would look to see if y'all playing for a championship in the Colonial the week before the end of the season. I will artificially make sure y'all in the top 10 regardless because this is ridiculous. But Thune Cook and Marching Wildcat, yeah, I know y'all probably got somewhere else to go dance for the basketball team somewhere, a football game. But I, I mean, professional NFL team, I don't know. They're probably going to figure it out. But that still irks me so much. I just don't get it. Let's get in the top ten before I just really blow a gas. Number ten, Fayetteville State, the marching band, 3-0, 2-0, 13 points. I wonder if they're going to be able to travel. It's a little different. They have NCAA budget. But still, find the money. Get your team down there so you can go in the other state, tight in Mississippi with all – uh, that needs to be to support your team. They are ranked number 10 with 13 points. Let's get into number nine. You got all folks, eight, Spartan, Legion, Marching Band. Maybe that's why they got mad. Because I was told by the report that the Spartan, Legion, Marching Band came a couple weeks ago to that matchup against North Carolina a and and t got it done. But the Spartans made sure there was no question at the halftime, coming in, zero quarter, fifth quarter. Man. Spartan Legion marching bad, no doubt. They're a serious band. They remain at number nine. Maybe that's why a t is upset. At number eight, getting into the marching band, let's get into Albany State Marching Ram Show Band. Four and one, four and oh, had a tremendous season, 18 points. Uh, they fall two spots in terms of what's changing in the band of number eight. Let's get into number seven as we keep things moving. At number seven, we have Florida and in March of 100, three and one, two and one. They jump back in the top 10. They go on the road, get a little revenge from the following year. Alabama State upsets Alabama State. Get it done on the field, in the band. It was a close one. Uh, they got it done. What, Sam, you jumps back top 10. See what happens when you actually have marching band battles. You can find your way in the top 10. Let's go to number six. At number six, we have none other than Texas Southern. Ocean to Show Marching Band, three and four. You talking about coming on late just like the football brand? They oh, took shoot. it to Graham. It was over. I mean, you know, I guess the little reflection about what took place in this game, you saw what Texas Southern did in terms of the score on the football field. Mm. Well, the fourth quarter, the halftime show in the fifth quarter, Ocean of Soul might did it worse. Uh, they really trans Grambling. What happened to Grambling? They need to wake back up, man. The football team got a little spirit. The band is slipping. There's some slippage there. Mm. I don't know man, what this top five. There. What this top five look like? Lord, yeah, I want to know exactly. That's 
bottom five. Let's get into the top five so you can answer your question. What does the top five look like when you go to number five? None other than oh. Prairie a and The Martian Storm is three and one, two and one, six to eight points. Uh, I don't think they're going on the band when you talk about a championship going on the road. They're going to send the football team out there. So that stuff has you following. And then on carry the ride if they go to the SWAC championship game on the back of the football team, but you're not going to be up and get there. Uh, what is that about? Never mind. Let me go into number four. Enough of that. Folks just don't understand. As we get to number four, North Carolina Central, Sam Machine, Damn, man. three and oh, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> I was concerned. They continue to roll. It looks like Joshua concerned. approved. Let's go to number, number two at the top of the list. I'm excuse me, number oh, three is Southern Utah Box. Four and one, three and one, two first place votes. Nobody does it better. Oh, don't they stay at number one. Three. <laughs> at number two, let's get into it. You <laughs> out, out of Alabama State, Marty March and Hornets, they fall to it's number sick. one after a couple of weeks. <laughs> they get sick. taken down by the contest against Sam <laughs> U. They are no longer undefeated at 4 1, 2 1. It was tough. Uh, they lost. They still have two first place votes, 81 points. They are no longer number I one. Know. So you probably figured it out by now. The number one band oh, this week wow. is none other than Jackson State Sonic Bull of the South. 71 61, four first place votes, 81 points. They got a little help from Alabama State losing the fam. You not oh. number one. Spot. They move up, take it, but now they have a mix up as they go on the road this week to Alcorn. Can they hold it? Can they hold it down? Let me nah. go to BJ Jones first. Uh, as a lot of mix, a lot of thought process, BJ Jones, I know you focus on football a lot of ways, but you understand the culture. You talk about a band with Southern that understands how to mix it and support their team. Uh, you talk about Jackson State Southern, the matchup. You go into the Magic City Classic. You talk about the decisions there. You know about this culture just as much as anybody. What do you talk about? My what are your thoughts on my top ten all rankings this week? Man, I have fam. You rank a little bit higher, dog. I got a chance to see fam. You this weekend, <laughs> and fam, you is one of them bands, man. When you see them, mm. man, seeing them in person and hearing them on, on YouTube, the clip. Man, that's night and day from each other, man. Fam, nice. you right. sound heavenly, man. It, it sounds like God wrote them music. <laughs> his own thing. Man, they sound so good, man. Uh, I enjoy watching them this weekend, man. Enjoy them and Bama State going back and forth to each other, man. But, man, fam, you, man, show me this weekend, man, why they're a lot of people's favorite band. Like mm. nice comment, nice thoughts, and that's for somebody that was in the accident. He saw it live, so it's his eyes, his ears. Be Joshua Sims, I know you are getting excited about the bottom five. You say, Who in the top five? Yeah, what are your thoughts when it all revealed? A lot of mix up this week, it went down. Listen, man, um. I give a lot of credit to my excitement around the, the band sport to this show. Uh, it's I, I haven't held any punches. I, I've taken my licks as it pertains to this. And I say it again. When I played at North Carolina Central and I attended North Carolina Central, I never heard our band one time. And so, you know, post-graduation, hearing our band, <laughs> dog, it changed, it changed my whole mentality on it. And by being on this show, dog, I, I normally wouldn't get excited about rankings like this. But then when I saw your bottom five, I'm like, hold on, dog. I know he didn't do me like that. But for us to still be at four, we still holding it down. That's fine. When we get to when we get to Atlanta, we're gonna put on the show, man. I can't wait for the sound machine to get to the eight. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it no up. point. Man. It's setting it up. You setting it up. Prairie View get it done this week. Southern still in the mix. Uh it's a lot of teams in there. All oh, corners wait. in the mix, Texas Southern. All these teams are fighting out of the West. Yeah. They get a match with uh, Jackson State. And so you're going to tend to have a top 10 matchup in terms of that celebration bowl. That's pretty big when you think about might it. Might be top five. Or it might be a top five. Exactly. It could be a top five. Charles, what are your thoughts? Your big boys, they came through. They yeah, they the did. top of the mountain this week. Can't hold on. Yeah, they did. I have to uh, take my hat off to the Sonic Boom this week. 
Uh, and you know my criteria, Doc. You know, I, I'm big on the band showing up. Number one, be there. Uh, be there when they need it. Uh, Jackson State was able to clinch the SWAC East this past weekend, and the band was in attendance. But also, the band was engaged in the game. Can you be the 12th man for your football team? Can you amp up the crowd uh, in, in between uh, quarters? You know, that, that, that's big to me. So when bands, you know, hit that trifecta, when they engage the fans, engage the football team, and, and just aliven up the entertainment aspect of the game, it creates the perfect atmosphere for a good culture. And you're going to get all that this weekend, especially Jackson State and Alcorn uh, going at it. Who's going to be that 12th man that's going to, you know, keep that keep the fans excited. He's been funky. Football team pumped up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you it's going to be good. There you go. They're marching in. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. They have that. Both bands yeah. have that animosity to each other, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's personal. It's personal. Yeah, we call it the marching sport for a reason. It's going to be good mix-up. Then next week, we got a little more with the Bayou Classic week. There you go. Yeah, it's going mm. down. Mm. With that being said, let me give a shout again. BlueDeathValley.com. My boy, Samaj, I feel you. I feel you. You're disappointed in your text. I'm right with you in terms of your tweet. I should say, we got to do better. We got to do better. We got to do better. We got to figure it out. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. Giving you my marching sport and week mm. number nine. We keep moving on as we get to it. Uh, as we get through it, week number eleven, I should say. Actually, let's take our break. We'll be back the other side. We'll get back into some of the football. We'll get with these football gurus. All of them will be down as we got the CIAA uh, in terms of the playoffs. We'll talk a little about that. We'll sneak in probably this IC as they take a. We off the uh by this week, but we'll sneak in a little bit and get their thoughts on that. And then we'll get some key matchups in the West. Uh, we have a key matchup in the MIAC game of the week. Stick right back on the other side, and we'll tell you about it. So stay tuned as we have more football. To- we'll be right back after. Thank this. you guys for what you do for HBCU athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for 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 all of us. This is our ESPN, so we 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 love what you guys do, Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN. We really appreciate what it is that you got you guys do for us. For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From a national memorial for peace and justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. Brian Fulford, A.D. Drew, and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, boy, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is Dr. Mill inside the HBC Sports Lab. Man, I'm telling you, some of those mid-break conversations be off the chain. With that being said, let's get into uh, the mid-major games of the week. Uh, we got some big ones. We're going to start off not really with a matchup, but just your thoughts in terms of Benedict. Uh, let's start over there in terms of Benedict as we get into the CIW, we get in that Cleveland next. But I want to get y'all thought, obviously. This is off the board, if you would. Columbia, South Carolina, uh, Charlie W. Johnson Stadium will be Benedict. They won't play this week. They'll play the 26s. They have a bye. What are your thoughts in terms of Benedict? Everybody talks about the defense. Um how far in the playoffs do you think they can go? I'm going to start with you, B.J. Jones. Man, the biggest thing for Benedict, man, is that they find different ways to win. Mm. Um, I think with that offensive line, they have something 
that you need as far as going far in the playoffs. They're solid on both sides of the ball in the trenches. They're solid on the offensive line. They're solid on the defensive line. They can put a lot of pressure on you with, with four. They don't have to blitz a lot. Um, and, and that speaks volumes to the job that Chinese Berry has done uh, since he's arrived arrived in Columbia, South Carolina. So uh, the key for them uh, to, to, you know, making it far in the Division II playoffs, limit turnovers, penalties, and you got to win special teams battles because uh, th- that special teams is usually that third of the game that sometimes we kind of forget. Great points when you talk about that. I'm going to go to you, Charles, next in terms of Benedict. Uh, where do you think that they're really going to be able to cut their bones uh, to make it uh, throughout the playoffs to get a good push? Yeah, you know, when you talk, you're talking about playing championship ball, it's all about defense. For me, BJ knows that. that and I think Benedict has one of those type teams uh, that they can, re- you know, rely on their defense to get them some extra possessions, create some turnovers. And, you know, it, it, in so many ways, they do remind you a little bit of Jackson State because – uh, in terms of defensively, they get after you. Uh, this is a team that has to kind of beat themselves, and they have done a great job this season thus far in terms of not beating themselves and, and doing it on the defensive end. So, uh, and like BJ said, that front four can get after you. They don't have to, uh, you know, bring extra uh, players, bring extra pressure and things of that nature. So uh, this is a team that can make a good deep run. Uh, it's going to be a, a spirited battle over there in the D2 playoffs, but Benedict is one of those teams they can make a deep run. Obviously, we're talking about South Carolina, but in North Carolina, our last HBCU team at the Division II level that made it significantly far outside of Bowie was that team in terms of one Salem State. Yeah. Made it to the semifinals, then they backed it up the last year, made it to the championship, couldn't quite get it done. Uh, but so with that said, Joshua Sims, uh, what are your thoughts in terms of getting – through these playoffs and making another push for HBCU. Have a chance to play Virginia Union. If you, Virginia Union can get it done, get over the hump, uh, they have a chance to see them. And we'll talk a little bit about Virginia Union shortly. But what are your thoughts in terms of Benedict and what they might be able to do? Yeah, Benedict? Doc, man, uh, championship caliber teams have, an, I have a – it's almost like a formula, man. It's, there's a formula to them. And, and a lot of them, most of them, if not probably all of them, it starts on the defensive side of the ball for them. So for Benedict, check that off the box. On offense, they limit their mistakes. They don't make a lot of mistakes. They allow for the game to come to them, and they find ways to make plays on the offensive side of the ball. Check. And for whatever reason, Benedict finds a way to just be consistent on special teams. Um, you know, and, and that's what you essentially want from your special teams. You want your special teams to just be consistent. You know, if we kick in field goals, let's make field goals. Make, let's make way more than we miss. Let's, you know, be able to kick the ball off. Let's not make sure we give up any kickoff returns to the outs. Check that off the box of Benedict. So when you look at that mixture and that formula that they have down in Columbia, South Carolina, it's a championship caliber team. The quarterback doesn't make very many mistakes. They can run the ball fairly well. If they need to throw it, they don't throw it a lot, but if they need to throw it, they can throw the jump ball to the receivers that they got, you know, and then that defense kind of steers and controls that team. So when I see that combination on a team, that tells me they have all of the nuts and bolts to be a championship caliber team. It's just going to have to roll they, the way that they need it to. And, you know, Virginia Union takes care of business against Wingate this weekend. Uh, we'll get a chance to see what I think will be the, the Division II play game of the year um, between Virginia Union and Ooh, I want that. I want that bad. I, I, I don't want it too bad, bad, but I want that. I want that. But before we get into that one, let's get into the one in Mississippi, Cleveland, Mississippi. Mm. Uh, Charles, just in a row, obviously – in terms of this matchup, we got number three, Fayetteville State at Delta State, uh, Cleveland, Mississippi, Horace L. McCool Stadium, NCAA Division II playoffs first round, CIAA uh, is represented in this matchup November 19th at 1 o'clock. That's number three, Fayetteville State in terms of HBCU bowl ranking. Uh, at the number two seed in this region, Delta State Statesman, obviously Jackson State played them a couple of years ago. Del- uh, Mississippi Valley State that's playing Prairie View this weekend played them this year uh, in terms of SWAT, one and one against them if you want to look at it like that. Uh, Delta State is 10 and one, six and one. What are your thoughts on this matchup? What will Fayetteville State have to do to get this done? They're going to have to stop Patrick Chagar, uh, who is one of the top players in the Gulf South Conference. Hey, he is a dude. I believe at one point, uh, mid season somewhere, uh, Delta State rolled up over 700 yards of total offense. So uh, he's one of those guys who have got to 
uh, get your hands on, get to them early, get to them often. But uh, this Delta State offense, it is a serious juggernaut. First time Delta State has been back in the uh, each playoffs at least since 2017. They have a national title on their uh, resume, uh, 15 and 8 postseason over, over the past few years. Uh, but it's going to be a tough environment uh Fayetteville State in Cleveland this, this weekend. Those uh, fans for uh, the statesman, they're chomping at the bit uh, to, you know, get back in the mix in terms of being in the elite division, too. Yeah, you talking about the Gulf South Conference in terms of the success that conferences had in the Division two tournament. So anytime they get a team in there, you got to think that they have a chance to go far. So this is a team task, but I want to see what Joshua Sims coming out of the CIAA area pretty familiar with uh, Fayetteville State out of North Carolina itself. Uh, what are your thoughts in terms of the matchup? They go over the hill, uh, got the CIAA championship, so they're feeling good about themselves. Pretty solid defensive team. They played better through the year. What are your thoughts about their chance against Delta State? Yeah, man, uh, Fayetteville State's going to have to play this game like they're playing against the number one seed. You know, if, if Benedict doesn't exist, Delta State is the number one seed in that region. They're going to have to come into this game and play that game like they're playing against the number one seed. And that's what I mean by that. On offense, you know, Fayetteville State's not a great offense, man. And that's the truth. But this is the second season. Maybe they find something now that didn't exist during the season. If they can find something, that that gives them a fighter's chance. Defensively, they are solid. If that defense can stay as they are, it gives them a fighting chance. But just a part of my heart, you know, coming from the CIAA area, you know, living in North Carolina, a part of my heart wants Fayetteville State to go down there and shock yeah. the world, you know, and put themselves in a position. And so I don't, you know, I think that there's, a, there's an opportunity for them to be able to make this game, you know, a, a really good game. It's going to depend on if they can get something going on offense that is even reputable because that Delta State defense is the real deal. All right, so uh, that's my point, Doc. I just think, you know, I don't want to say anything that, that'll, you know, possibly hurt the Fayetteville State family fa uh, feelings or nothing, but uh, playing a perfect game. Yeah, it's a tough <laughs> matchup. I mean, you can't get around it, um, and that's what we call it. When we call it on the show, we tell you what's going on and what needs to get done. B.J. Jones, this is a tough assignment, as they say. They know it, but uh, what are your thoughts? You get into the playoffs, that's significant. Now you want to take that next step and win the game. What does the Fayetteville State have to get done to win this game this Saturday? Man, when you start talking about the Gulf South Conference, they, they call it down here the baby SEC. Look at the last <laughs> 20 years, the Gulf South Conference, and look at the amount of national champions have come out of the conference. We took, we know about that also State. West Georgia was with, was a the title contender. West Florida has won a national championship. Oh, uh, we've seen West Alabama make some runs. Delta State has won a, a national title. Man, that league is, is so deep, and, and, and the talent uh, that that they have, you know, that they have there, man. It's it, it's it's they they do it every year. And when you play a team out of the Gulf South Conference, one thing that you're going to have, they're going to play. They're going to be solid defensively. And they're usually going to have a quarterback that's going to be a Harlan Hill candidate. Delta State got both of them. Um, and, and, and so for <laughs> Fayetteville State, what you have to do is that you got to play your best game. Make Delta State beat you. Don't turn the ball over. Don't give them short fields. Be solid on, on the special teams. Limit the stupid mistakes. We can't have the personal fouls. We can't have the false starts. We can't have the offside. If you get a penalty because you're playing hard, we can accept that. But it's a stupid one that that are in your season. So if you're Fayetteville State, man, you got to play your, your your best game of the year because this Delta State team, man, they they're, they're solid. They're, they're very solid. Sticking with you, uh, BJ Jones, you talk about a Harlan Hill candidate. We got one here at Virginia uh, Union as they come in at number two. They place a Wingate, Richmond, Virginia. So it's a home contest. Holy Field, Division Two playoffs. First round again, as I said earlier about these matchups we're talking about in this mid-major division. It is Saturday. This one starts at 12 o'clock. Wingate Bulldogs are 9-2, 6-2 uh, versus the number four seed, uh, Virginia Union Panthers, in terms of this uh, region, 9-1, 7-1. Uh, they got the bid to the tournament, even though they didn't play the last weekend or play the championship, but they played solid all year long. 
they've been on the road, so they're familiar with playing. Uh, historically, white colleges got that win earlier. Valdosta, uh, which kind of started the season in the right path. Obviously, Valdosta didn't live up quite to the reputation that they often had, was still a solid win. What are your thoughts in terms of the union's chance? The end up coming out of this game and facing Benedict that many of us have our hands rubbing together. Can they make it happen for us and get over the wing gate? What are your thoughts, BJ Jones? Man, if you're a Panther fan, man, you hope that Saturday is the Jada Byer show. <laughs> uh, if it's if 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 it's a Jada Byer show, man, and they queuing up the fight song, this will be a long day for Wingate. <laughs> um, if you're Wingate, man, you gotta stop. You gotta stop Jada Byers. If you stop Jada Byers. You essentially stop that Virginia Union offense. But if you can't stop Jay the Bar, hmm. just keep the fights on, man. All day. Keep the on. All day. Charles, go ahead. Yeah, I, I hope. with B.J. Jones. Go ahead and finish I it off. I hope Virginia Union's quarterback, Jakari Grant, he's stretched out his, his hips because I want him turning all day. <laughs> Giving the Jada Byers. I want him, you know, I want those hips limber. In the bread turn. basket. You know? yeah, put it, bread put basket. it in the bread basket. Student body left, student body right. Jada Byers, let that offensive line lean on him. And that's the way Virginia Union is going to get this W. Man, you also, got, you got me leaning with a hip. My, my shoulder there. Lean on Lean on yeah. I like that. Yeah. Let's go to you, Josh. We're going to finish it up on this mid-major division. Virginia Union, what's your thoughts in terms of this match? Yeah. Yeah, man, it, I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going to say it right here on uh, Inside the HBC Sports Lab. I don't think Wingate stands a chance. Mm. Jada Byers is as motivated right now as you're going to see any player in the country. Uh, you mm. know, we we talking about an opportunity for him to win the Harlan Hill. We had a chance. We had we talked about the guy, uh, you know, who he's chasing, you know, uh, as far as with the Russian record. But this guy, man, if you look at Wingate, and you look at the two games they lost this year. Both of those games they lost with teams who controlled the ground. And you're yeah. now getting ready to play this game against the best running back in the country. This isn't even arguably. This isn't debatable. As it pertains to the mid-majors, he's the best running back in the country. And he's getting ready to come in there and run all over you. And BJ just talked about it. Think about the weather being a factor. What part of your game do you execute on the best when weather is an issue? The running game. And so right. I don't see Wingate having a chance in this world unless something happens to Jada Byers. God, uh, please, nothing happened to him. I am looking forward to Jada Byers going for 200-plus against this defense. And Wingate can go ahead and start getting ready for, uh, you know, for Thanksgiving and spending time with family and all that stuff. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. With that being said, let's take a break. We'll be right back on the other side. We'll get the major division talk and go about this West division and what is going down with the clock. Let's switch. We'll be right back after this break. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dashboard, as well as the upcoming week of HBCU sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com Press the analytic data with your hip hop If you know them like I know them They gon' tell you if your team If they wanna love laugh And who the ball, who the ball So listen to Professor Yes sir, yes sir And pay attention Cause he gon' teach a This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab With the professors We got Professor Bishop, Professor Sims And Professor Jones As they're giving a master lecture On some of these matchups As we close out the season Talk about the playoffs. Now we're talking about can teams get into the postseason and set themselves up 
uh, for uh, the postseason, whether it's the playoffs, Celebration Bowl, or even the SWAC championship game, if you want to look at it like that. And then you had a Bayou Classic uh, coming down the stretch here. But let's go to the MEAC. Because we got a, two teams that can make a statement. Yeah, it, they'll be right under 500, so that's going to give some people heartburn. But in terms of moving your program forward, both of these programs have a chance to make a statement, especially when you talk about Damon Wilson. In his first year, he has the Morgan State Bears receiving votes at 4-6, and 2-2 two and two on, uh, on the season, get a chance to have a winning record in terms of conference play. Howard Bison has a lot on the line as they're receiving uh, votes. They have a chance to share a piece of the MEAC championship. I know North Carolina Central fans don't want to hear that, but record-wise they have it. Plus, more importantly, they get a chance to move the program forward. And you have a lot of folks that have been talking about Howard. Just shout out to Mike Howard uh, in regards to that. These are not your grandfather, uh, certainly not your uncles. Howard Bison, they're looking different now. Uh, going back and even having Jay Walker smile a little bit about in terms of what's going on. With all that being said, let me go to you first, Josh, with Sims since this is out of the MEAC. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup for Howard versus Morgan State? It is in Baltimore, Maryland, which could be a key part of this huge stadium. 11 a.m. ESPN 3. What you say? Yeah. Uh, that, you know, Doc, when I sat down and kind of analyzed this game, um, I tried to break it down into the different components of the game. You know, who has the better quarterback? Who has the better running game? You know, who can be able to spread the ball across the field offensively? And then defensively, who has the more stout kind of stubborn defense that's just not going to let the other offense kind of do this thing? And, you know, I wanted to take out my bias and not wanting Howard to share the MEAC title and look at it for the ex from an X's and O's perspective. Um, you know, at the quarterback position, I, I do believe I believe that Q Williams is, is is the better quarterback of the two. Um, I believe that you know Howard may have the better offensive line overall offensive line in this game. Um, but you know when it comes to the outside receivers, I think Morgan State obviously takes that, and I think they have the overall better running back. You know, Alfonso Graham is, is the leading rusher inside of the MEAC right now. He's the only thousand thousand yard rusher in the MEAC right now. Um, and so when you look at that and you kind of look at that on the offensive side, I got to say from an overall perspective. I think Morgan's a better offense. And then it goes without question that I believe that Morgan State has the better defense. I mean, I don't, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I just don't even think that's even close. Howard's defense is as flashy and as as uh, uh, Dr. Jackal, Mr. Hyde, as any defense in the MEAC. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're not. We saw them be really good last week against South Carolina State. But that's a dejected, degenerate South Carolina State team that was broken by the Morgan State defense. Mm. So when I'm looking at that, I think Morgan State's got the better defense. I think they have the better overall offense, even with that three-headed monster that Howard has in the backfield. So if you're asking me who I think has the edge in this game, I think Morgan State does. And then you compound the fact that they're playing in West Baltimore, which is a tough place to play anyway. I got to get this one to Morgan State. I just think the overall better team is Morgan State. And, you know, then I can sprinkle a little bit of bias in there. I don't want Howard to share the title with us. <laughs> Charles, go ahead. No, I wanted the to ask Josh, out from a program standpoint, <laughs> who, who needs this win more, Morgan State or Howard? Morgan State. Morgan State. You know, you want to make a statement with Damian Wilson. That's a big splash hire for Morgan State. And, and for those who are watching the show who just don't know the history as it pertains to Morgan State, I know all of us do, but you look at Morgan State, Morgan State, is the perennial MEAC kind of program in that area. It, it's it's not Howard. It never really was Hampton. I mean, we being honest, it never really was Hampton. When Morgan State is good, that area of football feels like it's more balanced. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, Delaware State has never really been great. You know, so when you go get a guy like a Damian Wilson, there comes some expectations with that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some expectations of being able to win. And if you ask any of the fans or any of the alum from Fair Morgan, they would tell you that this game and them being able to, one, beat a rival, they see Howard as a rival, Howard may not see them as a rival. To beat a rival in this capacity, in this situation, with everything like this on the line, tells everybody in the entire country that Morgan is ahead of the ball and that next year they are going to be a force to be reckoned with because I'm hearing some transfers that are already talking about going to uh, Morgan next year. Mm. Nice. DJ Jones? Man, I... I I think with Morgan State, man, it's – I think that this is the, the game that we can look at in Morgan State and say, hey, this is the one that really got them started and, and the springboard them into next year. Um, 
Damon Wilson, I think in year one has overachieved. Uh, yeah, I think he didn't come in until late May. Um, he hadn't been able to, you know, get not one recruiting class yet. So I think that them winning this game and hitting the, hitting the road recruiting in the offseason with some positive yeah. momentum, I think that this Morgan State team is going to build from here. And I think we're going to be talking about them a lot during the offseason and, and some of the recruiting moves that they're, that they're making. Uh, talking to some guys on, on that staff, and they were saying that, hey, we get some calls back from, from some people who ordinarily in the past want to call back Morgan State. Um, so, I mean, it, it's already a big amount. With that, Charles, um, with that final thought, before we move into this next matchup, uh, who you got in that matchup? Who, you, who, do, you, who do you think yeah. will mean more yeah. to? I gotta, or at least who do you got in that matchup? What? Yeah, I got to go Morgan State. Uh, I like uh, Josh said, uh, I think they have the best running back in the NBA. And uh, like you said, uh, Howard can be – you can get a good Howard or you can get a bad Howard, and I like Morgan State at home. Sticking with you, the stick in the state of Mississippi, a lot of football being played in Mississippi this weekend. You go down to Itabina, Mississippi, Rice Totten Stadium. This is a West and Eastern Division matchup. We've seen a little more balance between the West and East this year, uh, unlike last year where the East just really beat up on the Western Division. This is a 1 o'clock game Saturday, number five Prairie View uh, against Valley. Number five Prairie View, and them 6-4, and 5-2, and two, everything on the line. They win it. They can pack their bags. Fans can make sure they book all their tickets, and they can head to Jackson for the SWAT Championship game second year in a row. If not, things really get interesting. Remember, Mississippi Valley upset Prairie View last year at home. But Valley this year just comes in with one win, 1-9, That was a home win on a Thursday night against Alabama A&M. Charles, what are your thoughts on this match? Yeah, I think too much is on the line for Prairie View this weekend to go ahead and get it done. I think a little different scenario uh, this year. Uh, when you look at last year, Mississippi Valley was able to get the win. Uh, Prairie View was already in the SWAC championship game, so maybe not as much uh, to play for last year when Valley was able to upset them. But uh, I believe in this game, Trazon Conley has to be special. And when you have Ahmad Antoine and, and Jaden Stewart in the backfield, I think it's a great uh, opportunity for Prairie View to go ahead and put the nail in the coffin and, and seal their ticket for the SWAC championship game. Last couple of weeks, both running backs haven't played, but when they play together, they're a big tandem. It's my understanding that both of them are healthy and ready to go. Go yeah. to Joshua Sims. What are your thoughts in terms of this other game in Mississippi? Man, three big HBCU football matchups this week in the state of Mississippi. What are your thoughts about Prairie View traveling to Mississippi Valley State? Man, this this uh, the center of the college football, HBCU college football world, lives in the state of Mississippi this week. Um, and look at Valley. Look at Valley in another position to play spoiler. I mean, Lord have mercy. We all believe that Valley's football field at least gives them 10 points. So does Prairie View's offense finally get into a consistent stride? Will they be able to take that consistent stride, find a way to beat Mississippi, Mississippi Valley State at Valley, and take that consistency into the SWAC championship is what I'm going to be looking for. Uh, Charles said the, the two, the first and last name that I'm looking for right now, Trazon Connolly. Who will he be on Saturday? And that is all. That's where it starts and finishes for me, Doc. I need to see how this is going to go. Yeah, I agree with you in a lot of ways. I'm going to go to BJ Jones and let him break it down. One of the things that were amazing about me in terms of this matchup, I've never seen a line like this uh, where uh, a quarterback throws 15 passes, he connects on eight. But eight of his connections, five of them went for touchdowns. I've never <laughs> seen a line like that. Wow. Like, wow. If it, nothing else, you talk about the efficiency. Um, they put up points, but I was like, wow. <laughs> and they were they were like decent yard pass. I mean, they were like they weren't like short passes that went wrong, or they wasn't necessarily 67, but they were like 20, 30 yard pass plays spot on. I was like. Uh, interesting. I've not quite seen anything like that. But what are your thoughts on this matchup, BJ Jones, before we get in the last one? Doc, I'm so excited. Let me tell you why I'm excited. <laughs> oh, Chaos. man, let me tell you why I'm excited. <laughs> man, I need to <laughs> Look, we know what Valley can do at home. We know what Valley can do on that field. 
let me go. Let me let you know why I'm excited. We're going to go to my, my good old weather app right here <laughs> and kick off for that ball game. And it'll be in the Mississippi. We're looking at a high of 41. It's going to be cold. We're looking, at a, we're looking at a sleet, rain, wintry moon. Lord have mercy. Coming in on that field against Mississippi. It's going to be cold. Oh, man, man, man. I can't wait to see it. This plays right into the hands of Mississippi Valley. Cold. Yeah, it just rain. made me nervous. <laughs> on that field. Oh, man, Valley, come on, man, come on. Hey, as much as I want Valley to do it, I think Prairie View has too many horses, too many dogs. I think I'm on into one. Uh, Cunley and, and that group, they, they, they're much, uh, you know, too talented. But my heart, when I look at this uh, this weather report over here, and that field, come on, Valley, come on. Devil <laughs> they gun, you know, man. Man. <laughs> I feel you. I can't blame you. But let's go back up to go to Alabama now uh, with another team out of Texas is in the hunt as well. Top 10 program, number eight, Texas Southern University. Biggest thing to me, not only in the hunt, but they got a chance to have a winning season. And let's be truth be told, a lot of folks – one of the things for Texas Southern, but I'm not sure people thought Texas Southern could have a winning season, even less be in a hunt. It's in Huntsville, Alabama, and it's a team, Alabama A&M, that's going in the other direction. You know they're going to fight the senior day, another West-Eastern matchup for a chance for the West to make a statement in terms of their ascension, at least back in terms of not just taking it from everybody in the Eastern Division. I made Texas Southern 5-5, five 4-3 and five, four and three at Alabama A&M Bulldogs 3-7, 3-4. and four. B.J. Jones, uh, you talked a little bit about the Alabama A&M fans. It's cold. They're not going to be there deep. The team is not playing as well. And you know kind of how those fans get when it's not necessarily a big contest or a big rival, particularly one of the farthest teams from the conference out, out of the, uh, West, Texas Southern, coming out of Houston. What are your thoughts in terms of the matchup? Though? Man, this game is going to have a spring game atmosphere type feel. Um, best case scenario, you get about 3,000 in there. Mm-hmm. Um, Alabama and them fans made the trip to Mobile and, and did in, in big numbers, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that, that was the conclusion of the season <laughs> for a lot of them. Um, unless they're a die, unless they're a die hard, they, they, they're not, they're not showing up on Saturday, which bodes well for Texas Southern. Um, what Texas Southern has to do is, man, go in, man, stick to the gun. And you don't know which AM yeah. team is going to show up. The album AM, the, the AM team that showed up last week hadn't showed up since Troy. Mm. Um, so you, you don't know which one of those ball clubs is going to show up. I'm leaning Texas Southern. I think Andrew Body and that offense um, can really get it going against the album AM defense. The key for Texas Southern, man, is you got to stop the album AM running game. Um, it's crazy that I'm talking about the Alabama and the running game. They're inconsistent in the pass game, but the consistency, man. That young man they got right, they got back there. Tailback is special. Yeah, great. Joshua Sims, do your thing. What are your thoughts in terms of this swag matchup? East West, uh, can the East West matchup? Yeah, another East West matchup. Uh, a, a lot still on the line, man. And uh, you know, I, I stayed away from the chaos on the first one. But I'm going to set it all on fire. Texas Southern, I think they're going to lose this game just because I want to see it be chaotic. Blow it up, baby. <laughs> Blow it all up. So that's what I want to see. I want to see my dog get a chance to get back to that <laughs> championship, man. I, I, BJ, my oh, dog, God. I want to see him get back there, baby. So set it all on fire. Here we go. Boy, Charles, <laughs> uh, what do you say here now? You got some Texas Southern fans out there. You're in school here, so be careful about setting it up. Yeah. But what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? All seriousness aside, Texas Southern playing some good football. You've seen it live when you had the break and had that weekend here. Uh, obviously, you saw them against Jackson State. Played pretty well the first half, and Jackson State seems to do what it does in the second half. Um, what are your thoughts I mean, in terms of this It's a lot on the line for Texas Southern. Not only win the season, but you still have your foot in the door uh, of that Slack uh, West race. So I, I think you're going to get your best Texas Southern football team this weekend. Uh, like DJ said, which a- Alabama a and team is going to show up? Uh, that team that showed up last week uh, was an Alabama a and team I hadn't seen since the beginning of the year. And uh, Donovan Eaglin, he ran his tail off. He ran for uh, 80-some-odd yards against the top-ranked uh, defense in the nation. 
Uh, and I think Alabama and they have to stick to script. They have to run the ball because I don't think the passing game is, is, is much to, you know, write home about. So <laughs> it, it depends. Can Texas Southern stop Alabama and m with regards to running the football? But I think uh, I think Texas Southern has too many weapons. I think they can get after you uh, with Andrew Body and Ladarius Owens. Keep an uh, uh, ear out for Ladarius Owens in this game. He, I think he has to get off for Texas Southern. Ricky Burton says PBB uh, to win this game. I'll take that. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Kabir, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike Washington's out on assignment, so we have none other than Josh Sim Senior, BJ Jones. They have something cooking up in the mix. Make sure you stick with them on Twitter to see some special things we might have going into the Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, as we continue to build the momentum to close you up on to get all your information on all your HBCU fixes, stick with us. Uh, we'll make sure that you get it done. Have some other surprises in the work to see what we can get done as well. Make sure you stay on for ONG Strike Zone in terms of what they did yesterday. Go check them out over the week. We got Carlos Brown this Saturday as we continue to throw in the mix. And then obviously Brian and AD as they break it down on Sunday. Uh, go back and check some of those shows. they got some great interviews with the coaches if you hadn't seen it yet. But that'll do it for us. We look forward to you to discuss the latest in the news on Sunday to give you an update to let you know what happened this past weekend. All the guys will be in the building. So we'll be able to tell you. So, again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. We might watch the Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 and then Sunday at 9 during the football season. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles. DJ Jones. Lecture. It's missed. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. 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 I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress 